What is going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I've got a video that I've been working on but it is actually a makeover of my own home office. So as you guys probably saw, one of the series that we've been focusing a lot on this year is setup makeover, where I go and find a space that needs a lot of work and we redo the room, the furniture, the tech side of things, and essentially give someone a brand new space. And overall, I would say that series is a huge success. So a huge thank you to everyone who has watched that. But one thing that has sort of been neglected over the years is my own home office. It has just kind of been a very temporary looking setup. You'd have a desk against a wall, one against the window, maybe a PS4 on it and also another desk over here and in general I was just never a huge fan of the way it looked and although it had all the best technology and the products that I need to create videos it just didn't look or feel the best but I just didn't know what to do with it. So in this video, as you guys can see, I'm sitting in this kind of new setup right now and I'm gonna talk you through the entire process of what products I picked and maybe give some inspiration for anyone who is working at home as to what is like the ultimate desk setup. It is not the cheapest by any means. I have some other videos for that, but I wanted to go with like the absolute best for my own home setup because I spent a ton of time here and don't plan to change it anytime soon. If you guys wanna win an item from my office, just make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, leave a comment down below, and also follow me over on Instagram. And I'll be picking a winner when this video hits 4,000 likes. If you guys follow me over on Instagram, you might know that I recently purchased a dedicated office loft, which is going through renovation right now. So that is gonna take a couple months. So the reason why this entire room got transformed from three desks to one is because this is just gonna be my desk and everything else is gonna be over at the dedicated office, which is actually pretty close by. Because the setup has so many moving parts to it and that we had a lot of footage of just putting it together, I didn't wanna bore you guys in the actual tour. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the decisions and what products I picked, the furniture, the technology, how I optimize it, the design and everything. And in a separate video, there is going to be an actual tour of the entire office just focusing on the final product. So the first thing to start with is the wall paint. And previously this room is just like a crisp white color that I had in the entire condo. So I decided the first step was to paint it a different color and the obvious choice was to go with gray. That is sort of like a contrasting color that gives the room a bit of a warmer feel to it instead of just looking at a big blank white wall with my monitor right next to it. So that wall was painted in a color called gray from Benjamin Moore. It is literally called gray. And it is like a good medium between a dark and a color that also works well with sunlight nearby. Um, I just think it's a good medium and I use it in a lot of spaces, including setup makeover in my parents' basement. But while the wall was being painted, I didn't really know where I wanted to put my desk afterwards. So it was actually moved back about six feet while they were painting that wall. And for a couple days, I used my desk while I was in the middle of the room and actually found that to be much more enjoyable than being right up to the wall all day. And I felt like it just had more of an open feeling and made the room feel much bigger than it was. So in the new office going through, I thought it would make sense to essentially keep the desk right here and maybe even create like an L-shaped setup or just have my standalone desk in the middle of the room. But I kind of went through a lot of different ideas as to how I wanted to do it. Personally, I have never been into standing desks. I just thought it was too inconvenient because I had a lot of wires and I didn't think I would ever use a standing function. But I thought with this one, especially with the window right here and a nice view outside the window, I should probably take advantage of it a little bit more and it would make sense to have a standing portion right Right here to have a laptop to do some emails while also having my main workstation right here. So of course there was a lot of standing desk options out there and I went through all of them and looked at the different specs and I kind of decided that I wanted to create my own standing desk instead of just like a boring looking L shape. There was also a risk to that. It might look ugly, it might not work mechanically. Um, so the option that I ended up going with was using my existing desk which was from Bow Concept. It was definitely not cheap so I didn't really want to get rid of it but at the same time kind of adds some color and contrast so I went with the Ikea Carlby top which is meant to be a kitchen countertop and cut it down to 84 inches to use as the L side it's enough space to be able to work on this side while also having enough room to not bump my chair into the wall when I'm moving it around
So Uplift actually kindly provided me with a standing desk frame and they have a few options, including a commercial option, which is one that I went with. And the difference with that is that it's actually able to go a little bit lower on the minimum height. And it also has a cross beam across that supports the entire desk and it can actually carry over 350 pounds of load. So that was perfect. So when the standing desk arrived, I actually had my buddy Bryce, who was in a previous setup makeover episode um, that we did, and he was able to essentially help me put it together entirely from the starting frame to attaching my existing desk to the top of the standing frame on one side, and also adding blocks to be able to match the height of the Carlby countertop to the existing desk because it did have drawers. So it was definitely a lot of customizing and definitely not the easiest option, but because we're using an existing desk that had the couple inches of clearance for the drawers, we had to find a way to level it out as good as possible and just hope that it looked great and also worked great. Thankfully, after adding some blocks underneath and adding a trim piece to each side and painting it to the same color as the existing desk, this entire desk looks amazing and I really love the way it looks and works and anytime I need to, just go ahead and press the button on the end which also blends in quite nicely and the desk can go up and down from a standing to sitting configuration and it also has a few presets to quickly access. For anyone who's looking to make their own desk, I can recommend going with like an Ikea system, whether it is a countertop, which is very solid, but more expensive. But if you're already spending almost a thousand dollars on a standing desk, then you might as well spend a couple hundred dollars on a nice wood table. In addition to that, I also picked up a few accessories from Uplift, which includes like the power bar on the bottom. It is a surge protector. It hides nicely underneath. It is very durable. The cable is long. And some of the other like small customizations that we also made to the main desk was having some holes drilled into it so I can have the wires go through very seamlessly. There's also a power bar that is built in right here for my XDR display. And that just allows the cable to come out and go straight into the wall outlet. Stuff like the speaker cables as well are also well hidden. They go through the kind of desk channel itself. And I also have a hole underneath the desk for the SATA cables and Thunderbolt 3s to run the hard drives to this drawer right here. As for the side cabinet, I have one that is from Ikea. It is the Gallant system from way back when, but that just sits nicely and serves as a pedestal to allow me to still raise and lower the desk without it getting in the way. So the assembly definitely took quite a bit of time, but it was relatively straightforward and for a customized look, I couldn't be happier with the desk itself. One of the most important parts of any setup beyond just the tech and furniture is the software that accompanies that and really takes advantage of everything. So I'd like to give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, FX Factory, who makes some great plugins for Final Cut Pro 10. The first one is called the Callout Pop and it gives you the ability to have motion track text on anything with full customizability. To use it, go ahead and draw the box around an object with a ton of contrast and click the button and it will start tracking the movement right away. On the right side of your Final Cut window, you're able to customize all the text exactly the way you would like it, including the color, size, and opacity. And I also really like the fact that beyond the full customizability, there's 30 built-in options in terms of design. The next one is called Better Stabilizer, and I personally hate the built-in stabilizer in Final Cut Pro 10. It always has a ton of issues, it's also extremely slow. So with Better Stabilizer, just drag it over your footage as you would, and you have an analyze button on the top that can sense the different settings that work best. There's also the ability to select from a dropdown of presets and set the strength, and what I like about it is that it is just very fast. I also find that it does a way better job than the built-in one, it is just faster and more effective in general. I just like that everything from FX Factory is very easy to use and you also have a desktop app that allows you to take a look at all of the options that you have for plugins and the ones that you have purchased. If you guys want to check them out for yourself, I'm going to drop a link down below as well as a discount code to save you some money for some tools that can make a huge difference in your editing workflow. On the tech side of things though, a lot of this is existing stuff from before. I recently got the XDR display from Apple and I love it. I'm just so happy with it. And other than that, I added this leather desk mat right here and I also added a Sonos to the room and just kind of brought that all together. But beyond that, there weren't really any updates on the tech side of things. Like I said, I really liked the tech that I had, but it just felt like the actual room and setup itself could have been better. 
Because there is now a newfound gap between the wall and the desk because it is in the middle of the room, I also had to add something to the wall, whether it was like some stuff on the wall itself or even a console table. So I picked one up from Wayfair when it was on sale and honestly the quality just wasn't the best. It had like this like glossy black finish which attracted a ton of dust and scratches. So I wrapped it with 3M vinyl which is super cheap. Just go ahead and measure and cut and just have like a hair dryer ready and all the air bubbles are very easy to get out so it looks like it is matte black as it should when it came out of the box. And the countertop itself is not actually real marble. It has a wrap as well. So maybe when I'm getting my kitchen done at the new office, I'll get them to cut a piece and so I can have like a real stone finish on the top and just elevate the quality of an originally $200 console table from Wayfair. On the decor side of things, I just went to HomeSense and grabbed like the first matte black vase that I could find. I was like the only guy in HomeSense. I didn't really know what to get. I also got that globe and stuff over there and I printed some photos from Society6 and put them into some cheap Ikea frames. On the tech side of things, on the top I have my Google Wi-Fi and the reason why I don't use the newer version of the Google Nest Wi-Fi is because I like to have the hardwire ethernet to the computer to get the fastest speeds possible. And I also have a Sonos there and the reason why we have the play bar is because the projector system is coming soon soon. That projector will actually go into the ceiling and it will have a matching white mount and what we're going to do with that is have hockey playing because the Stanley Cup playoffs are going to be during the daytime and I think a lot of times I just don't really use my living room or my bedroom TV because I'm busy editing or wanting to multitask and I'll either just watch on my iPad so having a projector that can fire off at about an 80 to 100 inch size on that gray wall right there is able to allow me to have the 4k viewing experience and 1080p when I'm watching TV but also be standing and getting work done at the same time. So for the wall, as you guys might know, I usually keep things very plain. I don't really know what to do and I don't really have a preference. So I just went with kind of the same design scheme as I did for a recent setup makeover that actually turned out quite nicely with a few pegboards, um, some letter boards, a clock, and also a shelf for magazines. So these are actually called brand magazines. I found them online and I purchased a lot of them in different colors and I ended up getting that magazine rack from Etsy. It definitely wasn't cheap, but it is good quality and it mounts nicely and it allows you to show off your magazine covers, which I like the look of. And the pegboard itself was from Ikea, also relatively cheap. The durability is nothing crazy. It allows you to just put some stuff on there and it has like a bit of an artsy vibe to it. Beside that, I also have a letter board and I'm not really big on quotes or anything, but uh, because I love Formula One, I put it's lights out and away we go on there. And next to that, I have this clock that I picked up on Amazon that I saw over on Instagram. And although this was not cheap, it actually looks really good. It has the date, the time, and also the day of week and year. So if you're looking for a nice piece in the office, I can definitely recommend that because that is actually the first clock in my space. Some of the other things in the office that were not as recent but were added this year is a sound panel to the ceiling. These two are actually just like regular sound panels and they're screwed into the ceiling and they've actually made a pretty big difference in terms of making this room less echoey than it was before because it is completely windows and 10 foot ceilings. The rug below me also makes a huge difference and before I actually had this West Elm rug that was like 650 bucks but it was made out of wool I believe and it just shed like crazy and it wasn't really good at blocking out echoes but this one right here is actually from Ikea. It was way cheaper, it looks better in my opinion and it does a way better job in terms of shedding and also echo. On the wall behind me right here, I have one of my favorite pieces that I've added to the space and that is a CB2 Helix shelf. And this is definitely not the cheapest option. I have tried some like knockoff options from Wayfair that get the job done, but the quality is definitely much better. And I actually had a white one before, but because it had a great return policy, I decided that white on white didn't really look that good. So I decided to get the contrasting black and walnut option that also has a set of drawers on the bottom, which looks really good and also gives me some additional storage for camera gear and my laptop. You can see the decor is staying relatively simple. You've got like a speaker on the top, some books, and also some camera gear. I think it looks good as is, but if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. And it actually matches the walnut of the table very nicely because a lot of times if you're buying wood from different companies, you never really know what you're getting. So the assembly process of that was relatively easy. It is sturdy, it looks great, the quality is really good, and I'll definitely be picking up some more CB2 products in the future. To cap everything off is storage, and this is a tech upgrade that was added very last minute, but Synology and Western Digital kindly sent out a set of drives, as well as their 2419 Plus NAS system. 
As someone who shoots in 6K red raw footage for your viewing pleasure, it takes up a lot of storage and that is the reason why I haven't really backed up any files in the past. With this system though, it gives me 12 slots with 14 terabyte of Western Digital's red drives. And I think the best part about this is that with the amount of terabytes that I have, I just don't really have to think about it and I can just back up any footage that I have. I'm planning to use Synology's hybrid RAID setup and it gives you performance of up to 1716 megabytes per second and 671 write. So we just went ahead and installed the hard drives and put them into the slots one by one and the system is definitely not light but as you guys can see it is just super heavy duty and it also has locks for each port. Because the 2419 has a PCIe slot, they also sent over an M2 SSD adapter card for caching and also a 10 gigabit e Ethernet port that is also built in. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up on the computer and start using it and in the full video I'm going to talk a bit more about the storage setup and how I like it. I just thought I'd show you guys because it is plenty of storage and is definitely a huge upgrade to the workflow. But otherwise that pretty much wraps it up for this video where I'm showing you the process of how it came together in terms of design and also some of the product choices and as you guys probably see it is a blend of high-end products but also some that are somewhat in the budget range or at least a good value including that console table over there. Some of the other items I definitely want to go with the higher end because it is my personal office but I feel like it is as good as I could have expected. I'm very happy with it, the quality, the way we put it together, and like the decor and everything is gonna last for many years to come. So I just wanna do a dedicated video talking about that entire process. And I'm also gonna be doing a follow up video with like the official tour and like all the cinematics and visuals of the office itself. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all in the next one.